my name is Agnes Ma, and I currently am teaching at uh, the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design as an assistant professor as well as coordinating um, the fabrication studio. My background is in, um, I have an undergrad degree in molecular and cellular biology, uh, and then I realized my senior year of college that I did not want to continue the sciences, and um, I just finished my degree and then went ahead to try my way through the arts. Um, and my master's degree is in metalwork, jewelry design, and digital fabrication from Northern Illinois University. I titled this show, Please Continue, um, because we kind of have a choice to make uh, in terms of where we are in humanity. The works in this uh, show are all kind of dealing with the idea of how hum humans relate to the environment. So there are small jewelry pieces all the way to large-scale installations that um, hopefully will encourage you to think more about your daily interactions. Um, the biggest piece here is uh, something I made at a residency at Yellowstone National Park, and it deals with some of the endemic species that they have there. Um, for those of you that don't know what endemic means, it is um, a term used to <clears throat> describe plants that loc are only um, exist in one location. So Yellowstone, because it has been preserved for so long as a national park, there are still a few remaining endemic species there, um, but they are quickly waning because of all the visitors that go on site. Um, so that's kind of the biggest thing there that you can actually uh, walk through the arcway that is sort of arcway that is created there um, and hopefully be able to kind of meditate on your experience. I kind of created the show in a way where um, most of the jewelry pieces are along one wall and there's one in particular that um, I feel warrants a little more explanation. This one is titled Windbreak. Um, and it's a little, it's a brooch that is in the shape of um, a, a, a plant scale. Um, and for those of you that are familiar with the Colorado or Great Plains regions, um, there is a invasive species that is commonly planted in that area called the Russian olive tree. This plant was planted because it's very hardy and can grow very strong in areas where there are a lot of strong winds, and so that creates a windbreak for those areas. Uh, so that scale is the silvery sheen on the Russian olive plant, um, and then the laser etching on top of the plastic is um, uh, the landscape of like a plain area. And then um, I thought it would be funny, and I decided to uh, drill um, CZ, so like little diamond shaped things, into the Russian olives themselves and use that kind of as like charms on the bracelet that's detachable to the brooch. So one of the things that I think has really I've taken with me throughout my whole artistic career is that uh, when I first started in the arts, I had a really hard time understanding concept. Um, I had never taken an art class till my last year of college, and so it was hard for me to like grasp ideas that were really intangible. Um, that kind of drew me to jewelry making because you had this functional item that you could still, um, that served a purpose to be a dormant but was mostly just pretty. Since then that kind of gave me a stepping stone to move forward into more conceptual work and so there are rings in there that technically are functional, they can be worn, they fit on the hand, but you probably wouldn't wear it. Um, and that is to sort of make you think about how you exist with that object. So the dune grass rings in particular kind of serve that purpose. They have, um, the ring itself is like very wearable, uh, but the dune grass extends two feet from it. So if you wear it, you're gonna break it. Um, and because it's adornment, it forces you to think about how you relate to that dune grass. Um, with the lawn, uh, I that was actually a piece I created in grad school and was never able to show. Um, so I'm really happy that I can actually recreate it here. But that piece itself includes um, we'll have a like a four foot long stretch of of regular grass that you would plant in your lawn, and then in the test tubes, I've selected. Um, I actually went out and and uh, collected this from the trail near the university. Um, 
but they have all the weeds, like weeds that could in be incorporated in a lawn, but you would always pluck out. Um, in the Victorian era, uh, people didn't have green grass lawns. That's a very contemporary concept. Uh, you would see violets or other other natural landscaping materials in the lawn, and that's that was fine. It was accepted. Nowadays, we have a very distinct idea of what a lawn should be and there's really no reason for it because it wastes water and none of the grass is native to the landscape. Uh, with Untitled, um, it's a sculpture that consists of I think maybe 10 3D prints that are then glued together and patched and painted. Um, the top piece is not part of the 3D print, it's actually unfired um, slip, uh, unfired slip casting and so the idea is that as you water the soil and the seed inside of that little vessel, the unfired clay falls apart and you really just ruin this thing that you're trying to grow. That kind of mimics what we do in our society where we try to sort of help nature, but in actuality, we're just destroying it. 99% is a installation sculpture piece um, that deals with kind of uh, the prairie landscape of Illinois. I made that during a when I was doing a residency in Chicago, and I was actually commuting um, from DeKalb, Illinois, to Chicago, like on a weekly basis. And I would sit on the train and just watch, like all the railroad grasses uh, pass me by. I always thought that those huge, tall grasses that I'm sure you actually see along the roads here in Iowa were part of that natural prairie landscape that I had grown up learning about. Um, they were not. They are invasive species. It is the common uh, reed that can grow up to like nine feet tall. Uh, and it kind of just kills everything else because it can grow so well. Whereas like, like prairie grasses are often more delicate. And so that piece has um, loosely the cutout of Illinois and then there's etched in all the roads uh, in Illinois. And then the major highways cut or dissect that piece apart. And then the common reed kind of sits all through that. 99% comes from the fact that Illinois actually used to be um, made up of 99% of prairie land and it's no longer that at all. Compostable rings are, all they are are laser cut uh, paper, recycled paper basically that I layered together, layered together with, um, I believe I used a homemade rice glue at the time, um, and then inside of that has soil and a seed. And that is loosely sort of talking also about our fashion trends, um, since we tend to dispose of fashion really quickly now. But with those rings, you could wear it, and once you get bored of it, theoretically, you should be able to just throw it in the earth, and then something will grow from it. We Are the Anthropocene is a neck piece that has succulents um, planted in some of the comp compartments. This piece is... Uh, is ador adornment because it will make you kind of put yourself with that piece and kind of think about why it even exists. Um, that's kind of a good thing about jewelry and adornment is that inherently looking at something, you're always going to relate yourself to it because it's meant for the body. Um, that piece, I, it, those of you that don't know what Anthropocene stands for, it's um, a term that's given to this era that we live in where humans are actually directly affecting how the um, world is turning. So uh, the Anthropocene era started the moment humans existed on the earth. Um, every day that we exist, we are affecting the earth. Um, and so it's more and more apparent, apparent in this last um, century or two when industrialism um, has really kind of kick-started some of these environmental issues that we're still talking about. Dose Me Up Dude um, is my funny take on how you might want to dose yourself up on a daily basis. Uh, these are just gelatin capsules then with little tiny cute uh, pieces of nature that I collected over a few months um, that then are pinned on the wall. P1 and P2 are some of my um, works that reflect my silhouette works because I kind of had a series of works that dealt with plant silhouettes. Uh, the plants themselves I had collected along um, as a walk. Sometimes I would take walks just so to get me out of um, wherever I was and like really think about how I existed in the environment. And so those are just really interesting pieces of nature that I collected and um, silhouettes are 
beautiful. They, we kind of think about them as portraiture sometimes, and so that was a way to elevate this basically discarded item. In addition to kind of the content in, included with uh, Please Stay on the Trail, um, I had decided to actually make it entirely out of paper or uh, basically biodegradable things. So the entire structure is like recycled cardboard, recycled paper, some butcher paper, as well as um, then just Elmer's glue because it's non-toxic. Um, part of that is because I knew I wanted to make something big but big isn't always really feasible to travel with. And so making everything out of paper, making these I-beams out of hollow, as hollow structures means that I can easily lift them by myself, I can install them anywhere, and it won't cost too much to ship if I need it to. In general, um, in the gallery, I think you can see that there's a really wide variety of materials. Uh, that's not always the case with artists, but for me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned about material. Um, it's not never been an important part of my process. Uh, what's more important for me is like how can I convey my concept? Sometimes that's paper, sometimes that's metal, sometimes that's 3D prints. Um, and that's just kind of whatever whatever works works. Uh, while most of my work that I create kind of talks about the environment and um, how humans interact with the environment, I would not necessarily call myself an advocate because while I try to be a little bit better about waste and things like that, it's very hard to exist in our contemporary society um, with such like, it's just a limitation in our contemporary society. But what I would advise everybody to take away from this is just to be more aware of what you do. Um, that can be the first stepping stone to minimize our waste, minimize kind of the effect we have on the environment so that hopefully the world can exist a little bit longer.